all this. And we, so we just roast it everywhere on all sides. Everywhere. You could do it under the broiler, straight on a griddle, on a burner. And then the, uh, the skin comes right off and the flesh has that lovely charred flavor to it. A really delightful roasted pepper flavor. And this is just the same as what pimentos are. Or piquillo peppers from uh, Spain. Piquillo, I think, means beef. They're shaped like little tiny beaks, and they're red, and they're roasted over wood and canned. But I, I prefer, I think, of all those, my favorite is a freshly roasted red pepper. And these are wonderful if you, if you don't roast peppers at home. It's such an easy thing to do. Take them like that, roast them, peel them, take the seeds out, chop them up, toss them in a little bit of olive oil, with, uh, <laughs> olive oil salt, pepper, and herbs. And it's great on a piece of toast with cheese. It's just, it's a very, it's a very simple process, but I think a lot of times people spend a bunch of money at Whole Foods and buy it roasted already, but. Right. All right, so then we're gonna be using, in this dish, we're gonna be using a Bilbao sausage, a chorizo that's from, it's a Spanish chorizo, so it's a little bit different than the Mexican chorizo. And it's, and all I'm gonna do is slice this in pieces and then we're gonna, you could even, sometimes at the restaurant, we'll throw these under the broiler and then slice them and cook them that way or we can slice them and then saute them in a hot pan before we start to saute our squid. So, and I'm gonna slice up some garlic real thin. I'm kind of randomly just kind of slicing and chopping it to get it a little bit broken down. But then I'm just gonna throw on some of this kosher salt and I'm gonna use the side of my knife and just, Crush the garlic to a paste. We'll get the pan hot. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in there to start my chorizo. I don't know how hot it is getting out here, but we, what we really want... No? It's hotter than that. It's hotter than that. Not so much for the chorizo, but really for the squid. The trick of cooking squid is fast. Really hot, hot pan. If I were cooking it at home, I want that pan to be so hot that the oil is smoky, so when I throw it in, the squid cooks really fast. And if not, it starts to release the juices and starts to boil, and you have boiled squid instead of sauteed squid. And that's why what we're gonna do is season the squid. So I've got my crushed garlic paste in there. I've got a few of these. These are pretty big ones. These are from right out here in the Pacific. The tentacles, these have already been cleaned. So I've got, uh, I'll take a few heads, and I like them actually when they're a little smaller. I like those Monterey squid that are real teeny. You don't like the giant squid in the book. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking about that though, it was like an eight foot squid, or no. No, it was 80 or something. Yeah, it was huge. huge. I was thinking, I wonder how thick the wall of that, what would that taste like? The eye, I think they said the eye of the squid was as big as the hubcap of a car. So you don't find many of those giant squids around. No. But squid again is also, you know, sustainable. So it's something, obviously you see more and more squid on menus. Certainly you see it fried, but this is a great, we always try to get people to like order this calamari because it's such a wonderful dish. Yeah, we call it calamari. We think that will help yeah. sell it. But it's much more interesting than fried, but that's how people are most used to eating it. But again, Calamari is one of that, one of those fish that we want to try to get people eating because it is sustainable. It reproduces really quickly, which is the key. It's the same as, as with shrimp, is it reproduces really quickly, so there is not as much of an issue of it be, becoming extinct because we're eating so much of it. Like Chilean sea bass, we ate, it became so popular in restaurants and people were loving it and eating it and eating it that we ended up eating all the small fish so that they didn't get large enough to, to have babies quick enough and so they couldn't, we, the fish itself couldn't keep up with the demand. And that's why by restaurants taking Chilean sea bass off the menu, it's really helped that, that whole species just come back again. So that's the trick is that, you know, we're trying to sort of control how much, you know, what fish were pushing so that there's time for those fish to get older, have those babies, and be able to reproduce enough. Okay, okay. so we've got the squid going, or the chorizo going. I'm gonna take that off. Put it on the drain in a little bit there. And I'm gonna let this pan get really good and hot so that we can add that 
squid into a very, very hot pan. Well, I'm going to wipe out some of that chorizo oil and put in a little bit of olive oil. So what we've got is the squid with the garlic. I'm going to put a little bit of the crushed red pepper chili flakes in and a little bit of pepper. There you go. A little bit of... We both, both Mary Sue and I, tend to love black pepper, not white pepper. And I think that came from working for many, many, many years for French chefs that were really mean to us. And they always used white pepper. And so I think that just, you know, made us both hate white pepper. Not even together, but just from other our restaurant experiences. We never use white pepper now. Whenever I taste it in a dish, we just hired a new chef down at Ciudad because we moved Raymond to Border Grill. We just hired a new chef at Ciudad and he uses white pepper and it's like, okay, that's gonna have to stop for sure. <laughs> but he was, you know, French trained and you know, it's those French, they ruined white pepper for us. Yes, they did. All right, so I'm cleaning a little bit of parsley off. You guys know the stems for sure, like all these stems of parsley, you definitely save it, put it in your freezer. It's great for stocks, great flavor. So if you're making a chicken stock or a lamb stock or whatever, put it in there and it really gives a great, but all the flavor, a lot of the flavors in the stems more than in the leaves. Okay, so I think that's pretty hot, I'm hoping. You want that oil to be so hot, it's literally almost smoking. So when you're smoking, almost. Yeah, it looks like it is. But you're and the other trick is don't overcrowd your pan. So if you put a whole bunch of stuff in the pan, then the temperature comes down right away. So I'd rather have you cook it in small batches, but just cook it. Well, that's pretty good for an outdoor bur burner. With low BTUs. Now the thing is, you do want to cook it so quickly. This part of the recipe goes really fast. You just add, add the, the squid in, then we're going to throw the chorizo back in with some white, cooked white beans and their juice. Again, you know, we really love to have that um, balance of vegetables, so the beans add a nice bit. Then I'm taking a little bit of parsley. Again, I roll them up just like we talked about all the other herbs. With that rocking motion, I'm just going to cut it really nice and fine. I've got my thumb behind, my third finger, the knuckles guiding the knife with that rocking motion, which is why you need this French-shaped knife. Although.